for the last several hours, we have been upstairs listening to that tape. And that tape shows that the victim never said the words, he has a lot of money and I know what to do. There was a Fulani interpreter in that meeting from beginning to end. He listened to that tape. We all listened to that tape over and over again. This is important. She was the victim, Ms. Diallo, was sexually assaulted and almost raped by Dominique Strauss-Kahn on Saturday, May 14, 2011. What we were told is that a day later, she was captured on the phone talking to a guy in prison about essentially how to get his money. Now, what's important is we listened to more than one tape. The first phone call that Ms. Diallo had with the gentleman in Arizona who was in jail, she told that gentleman that someone tried to rape me and that he's a powerful big man and that they fought and that he tried to take her clothes off and that he pushed her and when he could not take his clothes off he made her do something against her will now that is critical because the very first time she spoke to the gentleman in jail about Dominique Charles Kahn she never said one word about his money the discussion about his wealth never came up. It was about what Dominique Strauss-Kahn did to her. It was about how he tried to rape her. That is critical in this case. How do you think that story got out, that it was about money, that conversation? Mary, you're going to have to ask the district attorney. Let me just say this. When you think about it, the quote that we've all been grappling with over the last month, the quote that was given to the New York Times on July 1st made it seem as if Ms. Diallo, a day after she was almost raped by Dominique Strauss-Kahn, was solely interested in getting his money. I am telling you, I don't have a copy of the tape. I hope to get one soon. But I'm telling you that certain things were said that were merged together in this quote that was given to the New York Times. She never said, I know what to do when it came to Dominique Strauss-Kahn's money. And so I am standing here before you to tell you that Nafi Diallo was sexually assaulted and almost raped by one of the most powerful men on earth and that she told her friend the person in jail what he did to her the very first time they spoke that is critical because many of you were under the impression that the first time they spoke they were talking about how to get his money did you listen to the tape with the translator yes sir she never spoke about money at all in that time, not a single time, or did she? There were a number of calls, there were a number of calls that we listened to upstairs. I can tell you this, that the guy in jail, the second time they spoke, said, he's powerful, he's, he's, he's a rich man. She did not say, I know what to do. When he asked if she had a lawyer, she was okay. She said, I know what to do before the guy said anything about Dominique Strauss-Kahn. So when you think about that quote, the quote was misleading, in my opinion, because the quote made it seem like her sole focus was on his money and how to get his money. Her sole, her primary focus was on what happened to her how she was coping with the fact that she had almost been raped. Are you going to lunch with civilians? Are you going to lunch with civilians?
Ukrainian case today against Dominic strauss -Kahn. Today? No, not, not today. Uh, are you going to announce it? I would say this, that at the end of the day, Ms. Diallo has a right to assert her own private cause of action. A, a man attempted to rape her. There is nothing wrong with a woman who's almost been raped filing a lawsuit to stand up for her dignity as a woman. Dominique Strauss-Kahn violated Nappy Diallo as a woman, and he had no right to do so. What I'm telling you today is that this tape that they said they had, and I'm not trying to question the motives of anyone in this building, but what I'm saying is it is not true. And I don't have a copy of the tape, but she never said what they said in the way Specifically, the way they said she was quoted. So, Kendall, what was the context of when she said, I'm taking care of myself, or I know what to do? What was the context Irene, of that? Eileen, what it was about was the fact that she was in the, in the hands of the prosecutors, that everything was going to work out, that she had been attacked, and that she understood what she was going to do, and that she was going to get a lawyer. That lawyer was not me, that so lawyer that was, was someone else. Do oh, you have the feeling so Mr. Vance is going to dismiss the charges? I'm sorry. Do you have the feeling today that Mr. Vance is going to dismiss the charges? Mary, here's the situation. I can't tell you what District Attorney Vance is going to do. Only he can tell you what he's going to do. All I can say is, Nappy Diallo is an innocent woman who went into that room for one reason, and that was to clean that room, believing that no one was in there. And the New York Post implied she was a hooker. Well, we filed a, a libel lawsuit against the New York Post, didn't we? And, and we, we intend to hold the New York Post accountable. And, 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 and the good people of the Bronx will decide whether Nappy Diallo is a hardworking, single mother struggling to take care of her daughter like thousands of other women in the city, or whether she is a prostitute and a hooker the way the New York Post claims. And I, and I look forward to that lawsuit. Can you have any idea what the Indian Blood Donor Party is doing? Can you tell us how it went? Can you tell us how it went? Did you get a better feeling of what they were doing for your How was it at the end? How was the meeting? You characterized the meeting. People say you got a really bad relationship with the DA. How was the meeting? I don't have a bad relationship with the DA. I'm trying to.